You know what makes me crazy? It's all these crazy programs that people write and offer for sale that promise to optimize your RAM in your computer. And by doing so, they promise to speed up your computer drastically. These things are pure snake oil. Let me tell you why. Here's one that I saw on the uh, free download of the day or free giveaway of the day, some crazy thing that I subscribed to, and I just couldn't resist. So I've loaded it in this virtual machine, and I've installed a copy of GIMP, which hopefully will consume a lot of memory, and, I, and, uh, and I've got this Tweak RAM program installed. And it's turned off right now. I've got a copy of Process Explorer from sysinternals.com running. And we're going to take a look at it, and it's going to show us the baseline of the memory that we're using right now. Now, you can see right now some important parameters to, to notice. This virtual machine has a total of uh, roughly 785 megabytes of RAM allocated to it. And of that, it's about 607, 608 megabytes is available and the system cache is using 186, 187 megabytes. Now the system cache is a block of memory that's taken from the total physical memory to store uh, file I.O., uh, network I.O., things of that nature. And as you consume system cache, it takes it away from the available memory. System cache is a good thing because it stores data that would otherwise have to be read off the hard disk in memory and of course RAM is much faster than accessing the data off the hard disk. So you want to consume as much system cache as you possibly can. That's the whole point of having it there. Windows, when it sees memory, it wants to use it all. Well these crazy programs that are supposed to optimize your RAM have a little trick and what they do basically is they flush all the cache in your machine. So the numbers in, in the system cache category go down to like zero or close to zero, which throws your available memory way up. Well, that, that's all fine and dandy, except you've just thrown away all that perfectly good cache that you had stored away, all that data that you've collected from the I.O. and from the hard disk and network stuff. You totally trashed that. So now when you need to reaccess that data, the computer is going to go back and read it off the hard disk. And what does that mean? It means it's going to be much slower than if it just read it out of RAM. That's why these RAM optimizers are a bunch of hooey. And that's what makes me crazy. People actually still believe in this stuff. Now back in the good old days, I suppose, before my day, Windows 95 and Windows 98, they, they weren't really operating systems. They were, you know, fancy shells that ran on top of DOS. And programs written back then were done with a very with very bad sets of development tools, and so programs consequently had bugs, and the bugs sometimes had a thing called a memory leak, and a memory leak is where it would allocate memory to use in the program, and when it was done using it, it wouldn't give it back to the system, it would just keep it. So over a period of time, your system would eat up a lot of memory, and with the RAM being used up and not being freed up when it should have been, your system slowed down because it had to go and use the swap file more often, the page file, which is slow because that's stored on the hard disk and your machine became sluggish. And that's why when you had Windows 98, you had to reboot it like every couple hours or at least once a day to get it running fast again. Well, things have totally changed with the modern Windows, Windows XP and Windows Vista and perhaps even back to Windows 2000. It's, the operating system is... is uh, uh, much better in managing its memory. It's much better in when a, a task terminates, it will free up the memory that the task had once allocated. Windows 95 and Windows 98 didn't do this. And that's why you needed things like RAM optimizers. But today, in modern Windows, you don't need that. So what I've done is we've I've been talking to you and I've been letting this process explorer establish a baseline. And it's pretty well stabilized right now. So what I'm going to do is minimize this, but I'm going to leave this window open just so we can see what's going on. And I'm going to open up GIMP, and hopefully GIMP will consume some memory. And we'll go back and check this system information uh, dialog here or window in just a second to see. So right now, 199, 205, it's going up 208. This is your, this is your 
amount of cache going up because it's caching all that data that it's reading in that you can see right here. You want that number to go up and you'll see the available memory is going down and that's what you want to see. And so Windows is caching up a lot of stuff and so when it needs to access that stuff it's going to access it from RAM. Okay, so GIMP's fired up and we're not really going to do anything with GIMP except just let it consume some memory. So now we've got a little bit of memory used and if we move this out of the way you'll see that the physical memory was was here and it's gone up a little bit to about 207 megabytes and basically that physical memory amount is the total memory minus the available memory so let's see what happens what we're gonna do is uh, we'll just uh, move this guy out of the way when I click on this tweak RAM program it's gonna load up a little program and stick a icon down here in the notification area and it's going to display some numbers and the numbers are going to be I think the amount of available memory and then we're going to invoke the program and we're going to tell it to try to save as much memory as it possibly can so here let's fire up tweak RAM and down here you see it says 554 and it looks like it's a little bar down there maybe nope, it doesn't even pop up too like I like if you read all those numbers to begin with it says 557 bytes free out of the total installed and that's uh looks like it's about right because you convert kilobytes to bytes and that's probably about pretty close so now if i right click this thing and i come up here and say try to free a hundred percent of my memory now that's just a bunch of hooey how can you free a hundred percent of your memory windows has got to live there somehow but remember we right now as you'll see we have 220 megabytes almost 221 megabytes of system cache and that's good that's good memory that's memory being put to a good use now I'm gonna hit this little button and watch what happens we're gonna see on the memory available memory goes almost to zero system cache goes to 35 megabytes you'll see here in the physical memory it's peaked in other words what it's done uh, is move this out of the way here for a second what it's done is it started up and then it, tried, it called to Windows and said, Windows, give me just a boatload of memory. And Windows, being a good little operating system, gave it everything it got. And in the process, it threw away all this perfectly good system cache. So here, here's a great report, right? It says free RAM before freeing was 559 megabytes, 73%. And free RAM now after is 596 megabytes, or 78%. So this leads you to believe that somehow by throwing away all this perfectly good cache that your system's now going to run faster and that's just not the case now we're going to go ahead and close this now if I had a big thing loaded up here in GIMP like a big graphics or something or say I was using Photoshop or Word or Excel with a huge amount of data it would have it would have consumed an awful lot of available memory in the form of cache and also in program memory well, when TweakRAM ran, it, it asked Windows for tons of memory, and Windows did it. And what Windows did is it swapped all that uh, data stored in RAM out to the page file. And the page file is much slower, of course, than accessing data in RAM. So the next time you go back to Excel or to GIMP or to Photoshop, it's got to go out to that page file and read all those pages back in, put them back into memory where they were. And that's just going to slow your machine down. You'd see noticeable hesitations in the whole deal. If you open up Windows Explorer and open up some big files that have lots of thumbnails and things, you'd also see a huge delay because Windows has to go and recache all that data. Those, that thumbnail data and all the information related to the folders was at once time, one time stored in RAM. And now it was paged out to the page file, and Windows has to go to the page file and read it at, at, at a speed that's probably 5% of the speed of RAM, if, if not less. And you'll see a, a big clunk, and maybe you'll see the page paint real slow, or you'll see the, the frames draw in, and then the words, and then the thumbnails will pop in. It just looks like everything's just on, uh, you know, just way, way too slow. So that's what these crazy programs do. Now if we come back over here, 
you'll see the system cache is now sitting down here at 30 megabytes. The available memory is pretty high. You'll notice it says 619 megabytes is free. And the little bar is all green. So I guess that they think that's a good thing. Well, it's a bad thing. And, uh, and we're just going to do this one more time to see if I can get it to consume some, some memory. We'll start up GIMP again. And we'll watch while GIMP starts. It's, it will start to consume system, or put stuff in system cache. You see the number going up here. I'm going to move GIMP out of the way if you'll do that for me. Thanks, GIMP. Now we're, it's, it's, it's well, it was going up. And there we have GIMP. So now GIMP, he had to load everything off the hard disk. And uh, if I opened up a big file, I don't have any files here that I can open, but if I opened up a big file, GIMP would start consuming system cache again. Now, it may be that this guy is running in the background, and uh, if we go to restore, you'll see this, some of the memory graphs here, and I guess that, you know, this, this is impressive to people, so people say, oh, you know what, this is a great program, it's got graphs and stuff, why, well, you know, what could be better than that? It just, it just makes me crazy. I, I don't, I just don't understand what people think about this stuff. So, I'm going to close this little monster and uh, we'll never see him again but I just wanted to go through and show you what these memory optimizers do and how they don't optimize your computer at all they degrade the computer's operation and if you really want to get me going mention a mention deleting the prefetch file on Windows XP that'll just make me go berserk but we'll leave that for another day so thanks for letting me rant that's so much for tweak RAM Thank God it's only going to be available for another six hours, and hopefully not too many people will open it and read it and think it sounds like a good deal and install it on their computer because it will do nothing but slow down your computer. I absolutely guarantee it. So I had fun getting a little of this off my chest, and I appreciate you letting me chew your ear some. We'll talk to you later. Goodbye.